Shall I compare thee to the summer's day? Well, as you can see, William Shakespeare compared his lover's beauty to summer. Why is that? Summer and spring are the most beautiful seasons, as we all know. But have you ever wondered why in the world we have six months of beauty, green and flowers all over, but six months we have shivering cold? Well, I'm here today to introduce to you the mythos of Persephone. Well, some of you may know her. For those who don't, she is the queen of spring and the queen of underworld. Let's go to her story. Persephone, Persephonia, Persephasa. There are all different alternative names of Persephone. But who is Persephone? She was the queen of underworld, but most importantly, she was the goddess of fertility in spring. Well, the reason that she has different names all through the history, it shows that she actually existed as a figure, as a symbol in different religions. But now I'm here to tell you why are we going to talk about her? Because she's the queen of spring actually. Her story indicates our spring and our winter. Well, let's start from the beginning. Zeus had many, many wives, as we all know. One of them was Demeter, the goddess of agriculture and spring and fertility, also childbirth. She was known to be one of the most passive yet kindest goddesses in Mount Olympus. She had a child with Zeus, her name Persephone. She was a very beautiful child, very active, and just like her mother and like her aunts, she was always in the jungles, playing with animals, loving flowers, dancing with nymphs and naiads. She was so beautiful that her beauty was noticed by so many gods and goddesses. I should tell you this, Demeter and Persephone, as a mother and daughter, they were very close to each other, as like other gods and goddesses. But unfortunately, one day, when Persephone was bathing herself in a river with her nymphs and naiads, her beauty caught the eye of one of the most vicious gods of Olympus, the god and king of underworld, Hades himself. Hades is actually the uncle of Persephone. I know, this is about Greek mythology. What do you expect? Well, Hades actually comes up to the earth, or let's say the earth cracks open, and him with his chariot and dark horses steal this beautiful princess or goddess. She screams and she tries to free herself from his clutches, but she can't. Unfortunately, she's abducted to the underworld itself which we call it hell. Well, Demeter was actually suspicious because she didn't see her daughter that evening. She started searching for her everywhere. Days and nights, this goddess roamed the earth crying. And since she was the goddess of agriculture, her neglect caused lots and lots of cold winters and actually starvation for people because there were no crops or harvest that year. She started searching. She asked all gods and goddesses, although they witnessed that day what happened, they were all quiet. And you know why? Because actually the abduction was a quiet plot and deal between Zeus, the father himself, and the uncle Hades. Because Hades a long time ago had a deal with Zeus that one day he will take one of his children as his bride. I know very very tragic but as she searched in rome she found hecate the queen and goddess of fire and witchcraft hecate confessed she said i heard your daughter's cries but i don't know where she is so they visited helios the titan or the king of sun he witnessed that day what happened and he couldn't hold it inside himself so he shared the secret the moment Demeter understood, Hades stole her beautiful, precious daughter, young daughter, I might say, she went crazy. She brought upon winter for ages to the point people started dying and starving. There were no crops again, there were no food. And when there are no people, who is going to pray and worship gods and goddesses? 
In his rage, Zeus and Olympians requested her to finish all of her anger, put an end to it, but she said, no, my daughter is actually abducted. You need to help me. Zeus himself finally said, okay, there, there will be a deal. Your daughter can be free, but you need to listen to Hades' conditions. So meanwhile, this was happening up in Olympus, in heavens, uh, Hades and his queen, Persephone, were having problems. Persephone was refusing to eat, so she was actually kind of dying from starvation. She was waiting for her mother to save her, someone to save her. But, you know, still, she was starving from hunger. She was walking beside River Styx when she noticed a beautiful red pomegranate up in one of the trees in Underworld. Unfortunately, because she over she uh, succumbed to her starvation, she took the pomegranate and she ate almost maybe six or nine seeds. I'm not very sure. And after that, the spell a spell was cast on her. So this is how it goes. Apparently, underworld. If uh, you eat something, you become a part of it. She didn't know that. It was a trick from Hades. So Hades and Demeter came to an agreement. Six months she's gonna be with Hades and six months she's gonna be with her mother. And as it goes, six months when she's up on earth roaming and dancing with her nymphs and her mother, it's spring and it's summer, harvesting food everywhere. But when she's underground with Hades, Demeter weeps and cries and it brings upon itself the winter. That is actually the real may not be real mythos of winter and spring. One small note here, pomegranate actually is a symbol of fertility, specifically in Greece is a symbol of having children and fertility, birth and death. So that's why when she took the pomegranate and she ate from it, she was bound to be underworld with Hades, like a wife. So this is the story of Persephone and how it ended for her quite, let's say, well. But now I want to tell you a little bit of how her myth exists all around the world. Stay tuned. So after what happened to Persephone, Zeus, her father, decided to give her her own place in Olympus. Six months when she was on earth, actually. Well, when a goddess or god has a place in Olympus, it's actually a very high-ranking position and, well, she would be a hierarchy. She would have her own sacrificial days, her own temple, and so many other things, and people would sacrifice to her. So after she became the goddess and she started having her own place in Olympus, people around the Greece started worshipping her. They created a cult, actually, only devoting it to her, called Eleusinian or Eleusinian Mysterious Cult. It was nothing that special. They would sacrifice on very special days, such as spring or summer, animals to devote to goddess Persephone herself. What I'm actually concluding here is how Persephone and her alternate, or let's say her vari variants, existed through different myths and history. Well, something that is uh, noteworthy not here is, if you pay attention, Persephone goes to the underworld, comes back again, and she repeats this, this cycle every six months, just like how the weather changes or how seasons changes. Seasons change. Let's take one step backward here. Life is like a cycle, just like seasons. It starts and it ends and it goes on and it goes on. We call this actually the archetype of dying and rising god or goddess. We also have this chain in hero's journey. In all hero's journey or stories, hero faces a huge darkness, a problem, almost dies or sometimes in some cases die actually, according to Joseph Campbellian uh, mythos or hero's journey. They come back again as stronger. This is exactly seen in Persephone's journey and so many others like Addis, Adonis, also Osiris in Egyptian mythology. They are all dying and rising gods and goddesses as for Persephone. 
One more thing that makes Persephone a very worldwide mythological character is the fact that way before uh, Greek mythology, uh, Sumerian mythology existed. And there was a character similar to her. The name was Ereshkigal. Ereshkigal was actually the queen and uh, goddess of spring, just like Persephone in Sumerian mythology. She was exactly uh, just like similar to Persephone was abducted by dark character which was ruling underworld, Kur. And just like Persephone, her story is very parallel. So what we can see through Persephone's uh, viewpoint and story is the fact of chain of life, the fact that life and death are just like a cycle. They come and go, seasons change, and life repeats itself as more beautifully and strongly. I hope you like the mythos of Persephone and the backstory of spring and winter. If you like more stories about mythology all over the world and symbology, you can follow Me To Talk's YouTube page. Have fun!